Hey folks, this is Professor Hamlin coming to you from the State University of New York at Fredonia uh, with another Base Tips video. It has been quite a while since I've been able to release one of these. The fall has been absolutely crazy up here, uh, but uh, it's a little bit quieter now coming up on the holiday break here. And so I had just a few minutes today. I thought I'd uh, at least try to get one of these done. Um, so the topic that I'm hoping to talk about today is vibrato mechanism. Um, and uh, a former student uh, from Fredonia, Vin Milia, will very much appreciate this video because um, he has quite a, uh, quite a backstory with that descriptor of uh, part of the vibrato uh, system, you might say, uh, the mechanism, as opposed to the musical considerations with vibrato. They're really kind of two different things. Um, and what I want to focus on in this video is actually uh, the mechanics of making vibrato uh, as a sound. Uh, rather than when we should use it, when we shouldn't, how fast, how slow for this style, that style. This is less about that, more about just um, how to actually create the vibrato sound on the instrument. Um, so what happened with, uh, with Vin was that he received a, an interesting comment on a jury one time that um, someone liked his vibrato mechanism yet not his vibrato, uh, which I think illustrates an interesting point about this is that, and that is a, a little bit more on the style side that, okay, you can vibrate, terrific, um, are you using it in the right moment or not. Um, so uh, we sort of have a bit of a studio inside joke about that. Um, and also think it was a great learning experience for, for Vin to kind of hear it described in that way. So uh, so this one's for you, Vin. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm rolling up my sleeve here, as you can see, and I'm doing that because uh, it's very important to understand where vibrato is originated um, and uh, what the actual motion should look like. Um, and it's gonna be related but different in the low positions versus in thumb positions. So we're just gonna kind of talk about that and I'm also gonna go through a, an exercise that I have for just practicing vibrato. Some of the points in here, I would say that this video is more of a synthesization of things I've heard from other people, uh, namely Jeff Turner, uh, now teaching at Indiana University, former principal bass at the Pittsburgh Symphony, and then my jazz teacher from, uh, from University of Michigan, Robert Hurst. Uh, so this is sort of a bit of a boil down of some of their thoughts and some things that I've kind of added to it. So, uh, so let's talk about what exactly we're trying to accomplish with vibrato. Um, for someone that's never done it before, young student or a beginner, adult beginner, whatever, um, it's often misunderstood, I think. People uh, try to do some sort of shaking on the string, right? Um, this thing, or it becomes a very, very um, uh, tw like twitch oriented kind of motion. Um, and I think understanding vibrato as a roll of the fingertip is what we have to be uh, aware of as we practice this. Vibrato is um, a, a coloration, not a change of the pitch, right? If you do the shake that I was showing you, then you're absolutely changing the frequency of the, of the pitch. Uh, if you're doing the sort of um, uh, whatever you know, twitch or, or, or kind of tremor type vibrato where you're staying in a very small area, then you're, you're almost um, pulsing the pitch rather than actually uh, coloring it, if that makes sense. So I think it's very important to think about vibrato as a, as a roll of the fingertip. Um, and so how do we roll the fingertip? And this is where I have the sleeve rolled up for a reason. Um, what I try to uh, always start with showing people is sort of relating it to a doorknob. That the vibrato is originated in the forearm, in a roll of the forearm. If you watch my wrist, you can see that it's turning like that. What I often do, I have this empty plastic bottle here, and I'll hang on to it, and I'll have the students try doing this kind of thing. Now, you notice that I have the bottle oriented down, right? And I have that done for a reason. If you orient it, if you know, like this, maybe we can see it better like that. Student comes into it like that. This is not good hand shape, right? We know that. We know that a big crank in the wrist like that is not not helpful for anything. So if you have the student grab like a like truly like a doorknob, then they they will be practicing maybe a correct motion but with a bad shape. So if you orient the bottle down like that or whatever, you've got a you know wood a big wooden dowel whatever. Um, I think you'll find that 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 roll is a little bit more more relevant and appropriate. Uh, so that's the first thing I always try to do is have people grab onto something like this and try turning, almost, you know, turning back and forth like you're, you know, trying to get in the door. 
Um, and again, with that downward orientation, uh, so we can preserve a good sort of straight edge across here as we, as we know is so important, right? Um, okay, so that's kind of the first step. Then uh, we'll just simply take that to the base. Now, uh, I obviously have, a, have an earlier video that has to do with uh, hand shape, etc. Hand shape is crucial to um, getting a good vibrato sound. If you have a, you know, flat fingers or super narrow, way up on the tip fingers, um, you're not going to have enough surface area to roll back and forth and hear that pitch change, right? Um, and what I'll often have people do is start grossly slow, and I always try to tell them to contact here and here on either side of the vibrato roll. So those two, sp those two spots that I just showed you will hit the out to this side, the left side of the neck, as you go back and forth. And you can be gross about it, right? So sort of over-exaggerate the motion, right? Now, if I actually vibrated uh, with that much width, it would sound like this. It's really hard to go fast enough, and it looks completely ridiculous, and it almost hurts, actually. Um, but again, for the first step, to see it as a roll and to actually watch that finger sort of roll up and down um, is, is, is super important and helpful to get people started. Um, so that's a general sense of how the low, low position vibrato should look and um, I think be described. Uh, let's talk a little bit about thumb position then I'll show you the exercise that I employ to, uh, to have people practice this. So up here in thumb position, um, this is, uh, okay, so here's some more boil down from a few other folks. This is from, uh, you know, sort of Gary Carr through uh, my classical teacher at Michigan, Diana Gannett. Um, and it's the idea that you will create, imagine the hand is going to look like this-ish. I've got that angle pretty sharp right now for demonstration. But you can almost imagine the peak of a roof, right? So um, that is one of those things that uh, is going to give you the right mechanical advantage to get, again, to get that finger roll. And then with the, um, with the size, uh, sorry, with the, the peak of the roof up like that, um, you have uh, some weight um, on top of the, um, uh, on top of the shape to throw back and forth to help get that roll going, okay? Um, so the, uh, this is one of those things that, uh, for me, has taken a different shape over time, but it, again, it started with this idea that we have a peak of a roof, we get some weight up in the air, that allows uh, that roll to happen. And then if you can, if you can see this, if I try to use my bow maybe, I'm, I'm sort of vibrating on an angle to the string, if that makes sense at all. Um, so you can see that right now my bow is, is, re is interacting with the strings in a, in a diagonal sort of fashion, and that's sort of the plane or the line that my hand is following as I vibrate back and forth. Um, and again, you can have people start really, really slow with this. Okay. And again, you can exaggerate the motion um, to get a feel for that, for that roll. Um, and you notice I probably maybe maybe you didn't notice, but in either in, in both of those positions I used my second finger, um, and I did that because when you have weight on both sides, it's a little bit easier to get the idea of sort of throwing that weight weight back and forth for to get the vibrato going. Um, so those are the the, the general concepts. I, I will. It's a little hard to see from that angle, but I do actually. Um, if I'm like if I'm starting Kuzabitsky concerto or something, right? Like that. I will have my thumb actually braced against the back of my first finger. Now, if I'm playing passage work in thumb position, I do try to support, if you can see, I do try to support back with my thumb down. Uh, but if I'm, if I'm doing a big wide vibrato like that, uh, I do like to have that sort of locked in uh, behind the first finger. Uh, so, that's, uh, so that's the uh, general shape there. So let me show you this exercise. I try to keep these videos about 10 minutes. This one's gonna go a little bit long, but uh, let me just go through this exercise. The idea here is that you're metrically increasing the speed of the vibrato um, over quarter note equals 60. And this is, uh, this is the Bob Hurst bit of the boil down um, that, I, uh, that I've sort of just organized a little bit in a document. If you're interested in that document, send me an email, I'll be happy to share it with you. Uh, but the basic idea is that if you imagine you have the metronome on, um, which I'm not gonna do right now because my metronome is on my phone, which I'm using to make this video, uh, but I'll just practice playing with a good time. I'm gonna do that, that vibrato shape in super slow motion. It's gonna be quarter notes. 
Then I'm going to go to quarter note triplets, then I'm going to go to eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and sixteenth notes, and then full vibrato. And you'll see that I'm going to take four full beats of the quarter note down bow, four full beats up bow before I change rhythms every time. So I'll just play this for you. Good for slow bow and most importantly it's good for musk, uh, muscle development right so we're practicing playing all those different sort of subsets of rhythm and tempo we have a very energetic hallway today this is the second video I've made and we have some extra um, uh, contribution from the hallway here busy day at school so it is what it is uh, anyway you have that muscle development of going through those different rhythms in a very specific way uh, and vibrating in a very specific way um, so, uh, you can also do that in thumb position. What I suggest is to randomize this, do one finger per string per day. So you'll do, say, first finger on G on the E string, second finger on E flat on the A string, fourth finger on maybe B natural on the D string, and then third finger on B natural in thumb position. So that'll be one day, and I just do four different notes, different fingers, and randomize that as much as I can. Uh, now, last point I want to make in this video is about speed of the vibrato and being able to adjust that. That's all part of the mechanism, the mechanics here. Uh, this is the Jeff Turner bit. If you have uh, something we call it a nanny goat vibrato that's like right, it's way too fast and um, and sounds, I guess that tremor uh, kind of vibe we were talking about earlier. If you pull that vibrato backwards first, I gotta pick this, this trick up from Jeff, it does seem to just slow it down. So. Opposite, if you're trying to get, you know, you're, you're playing a pass and you land somewhere and you want a big, and you want to land with some serious shimmer um, and energy, but you keep getting, when you get there, it's too slow. Uh, the opposite can be true, to throw the weight forward first. Uh, so you get up there and then, and if you push the weight down towards the bridge first, uh, it tends to put some more energy and, and strength in that, in that vibrato and speed, most important. So, um, this was a lot of information. If you need any clarifications or have any questions, by all means, send me an email. You can reach me at hanlon at fredonia.edu. So that's H-A-N-L-O-N at fredonia.edu. And uh, yeah, I hope that's helpful to you. So uh, like I said, send me an email anytime. If you're interested in seeing the document with the exercise on it, I'd be happy to send that along as well. So, okay, take care.